Hello, hello, everybody, and thank you so much for being here today. My name is Jonah from Spotlight, and I am thrilled to be here with you. And please hop in the comments like folks are already doing. Let us know you're here. Let us know you can hear and see me all right. Also, feel free to call out where you're tuning in from. If you've been to any past Spotlight events, let us know. If this is your first time, let us know. And also at any point throughout the event, Feel free to let us know a little more about you, what kind of content you're creating, what course you're interested in creating, and also any questions you might have throughout the event. I will do my best to answer them as they come up, but we have a lot to get through today. So if I don't answer your question right away, I promise I'm not ignoring you. I've set aside time at the end to make sure to get to all of those questions. Just want to call out some people. This is awesome, everyone who's made it here today. If you're here today, you are likely interested. Oh, first time. Sorry, first time from Switzerland. That's awesome. My family is from Switzerland, so I absolutely adore it there. Uh, Megan, let me know where in Switzerland you're tuning in from. Love hearing that. But if you're here today, you are likely interested in learning how to build an online course from scratch. We're going to get into it, and I want to give you a system to do so that you can repeat and use in multiple formats with multiple topics, something that actually creates structure for you, because I know it is not easy building a course for the first time. That said, if you don't have any questions answered today or you want to dive deeper into any of the things I might mention, please go check out the Spotlight by Teachable YouTube. We're trying to do at least one to three events a week tackling these challenges that come with creating a course or creating your online business from email marketing to brand development to adding all of those elements to Teachable. We're really trying to cover all of those things. So also let me know throughout this event if you have any struggles that we haven't addressed yet or that you would love to see us do an event on. We are really committed to helping you tackle all of the challenges that come with starting your online business. Oh, we got a bunch of people tuning in. This is awesome. I feel the home of, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, Megan, it's a blast to have you here. Thanks for staying up late for this event. I know it's pretty late over there. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Once again, today we are going to be talking about building an online course and making sure that you're not wasting any time throughout the process. If this is your first course you're building or if you're just here to get a refresher, likeliness is you know it is really easy to get lost in the process, carried away, and waste time in that process. And if you're like me, you just don't have that time to waste, and it can be really discouraging if you put a lot of time into an element of your course that ends up not being useful. So that's what we're diving into today. It looks like we have a really good group here today. Thank you, everyone, once again, for joining us. But we're going to dive in and ask any questions, anything that's on your mind, drop it in the comments, talk to each other in there. There's a lot of learning that happens in the comments too. So whether you're watching live or the replay, hop in the comments and get engaged with everyone in this community. It is absolutely fantastic. Always having all of you here and sharing with me, sharing with each other. It's a blast. And like I mentioned, if you have to get up away from the computer or you couldn't make the event today, there will be a replay. It'll be on the Spotlight by Teachable YouTube. It will also be on the spotlightapp.io website and emailed to you with some extra additional resources and goodies if you signed up for the event. So all of that will be there. But let's just get going. I got a lot to cover today and I want to dive in. So if you're here, you have likely said to yourself at one point, I can build an online course. You've either taken an online course or seen the industry growing, and you have a specialty in industry you know a lot about and you're ready to share. However, once you actually start the process, you realize pretty quickly that there's some prerequisites to doing a good job. You might find that you don't really have clarity. You set out to teach everything you can about everything in your industry, and that leaves you tackling just 
too big of a project. You don't have a lot of time between the day job and your side hustle, or if this is your side hustle, there's just not a lot of time to build curriculum. You likely don't have a lot of budget because you haven't actually built those products yet and started selling them. So we're going to also give you some tools for building a budget while you go. And you also likely don't have a lot of help right off the bat. And I want to give you some tools for that as well. So we're going to tackle all of these challenges when it comes to building an online course. And I just want you, if you've ever tried to do this, just to repeat after me quickly, You've likely wondered, and it is true, there is a better way to do this. So what if I told you that there was a way to build an online course where you can crowdsource your topic? You don't necessarily have to come up with it on your own. You can use your audience, no matter how small, to guide your topic and the transformation. You can build courses on the go with this system. You can develop your curriculum alongside your business while making money, while cranking out a variety of courses to have a lot of offerings. You can adapt as you grow. Make sure that you're always improving your courses and improving your marketing and improving all of those elements. And if you're really smart about it and you're clever about it, you can get paid while you're developing a course. Now, this isn't a system we made up here at Spotlight. We have worked with hundreds of creators. We've seen what works and what doesn't work. And just to name a few, Pat Flynn, Tommy Griffith, Terry Rice, Terry Egioma, all of these creators who have found immense success in the course creation industry have used systems or methods like this to build their products. And it may not be apparent right off the, uh, off the bat, but if you just dig a little deeper, you'll see that all of these folks are doing it just a little smarter in a system somewhat like what I'm going to show you today. So the general strategy that we're talking about today is to build a series of mini courses through coaching that each address a small part of the bigger problem. Now, I've been in this conversation a lot with other companies like Teachable, other course coaches and stuff like this. A lot of people want to just build that giant product right off the bat. And I need you to trust me that that is not sustainable for you. It's not sustainable for customers. It's not what customers want in the current landscape. And if you just follow along with me today, you'll see why building a series of solutions to the small problems that make up the big problem you're trying to solve is a really fantastic burnout-free way to go about building your course platform. So where are we going to start? What's the game plan for today? We are going to tackle each one of these challenges one at a time. I want to give you actionable tools and resources to overcome these challenges. But in summary, your blueprint for doing this, your repeatable blueprint is going to be find the problem. You're going to listen to your audience. You're going to source the problem. Then you're going to find your first five students who have that problem and need help solving it. Once again, I'll give you some tools for doing that. Then you're going to solve their problem. You're going to coach them through the solution, the transformation that you have built for them. And then you are going to collect and adapt and turn that into a course. So there's plenty of opportunity throughout this process to be engaged with students, to be working with them, and to build your course while you're going. The big thing we're avoiding here is working in a vacuum. So many creators start out by just saying, I have a, I have a good idea. I'm going to build a course. I know people want it. And they do it all in a vacuum. And though that can work, rarely it can work, it's really not an effective way to do it. And you're missing a lot of opportunities if you do it that way. So let's tackle these one at a time because we're starting from scratch here. So 
when it comes to finding the problem, there's a few fantastic methods you can use. And the first and one of my favorite is just to reflect. So if you don't have a platform, if you're just starting out, you're actually in a really beautiful place because it is a common mistake I see for creators, including myself, right off the bat to think that they need to build courses in the industry they're in. But I want you to take a moment and reflect. What are problems people have asked you to help them solve in the past? This may seem counterintuitive at first, but if your friends, if your family, if your coworkers are regularly coming to you asking for help in a specific topic, whether that's the industry you work in or not, you can get a hint there that the people around you, your immediate community, see you as a resource and an authority in that topic. So, whether you hone in on the industry you're already in or you keep a super open mind and just think about things that people ask you and industries people look at you as an authority in, reflection is the first place to start. After that, if you need a little more information, you need to reach out. Ask your audience, however small, with Instagram stories or reels, whatever it is, polls, whatever you need. Ask your audience, friends, family, coworkers, what problems they face within the genre, the industry you're trying to teach in, and whether they would like a solution to it, what kind of solutions they're looking for. The next step is to search. You want to search not just Google. You don't just want to go and see who's already out there solving the problem. You want to search the places where your audience hangs out. And this is going to be twofold. One thing you are researching where your audience hangs out. And the second thing you're doing is you're looking for the problems they face. The internet is a fantastic resource for finding people's problems because people love to complain about their problems on the internet. So just a little tip, if you need a little extra help, go to existing creators in your industry who have had success, see where their audience hangs out and go hang out there with that audience. See what problems they're facing, see whether or not they found solutions, what those solutions look like. And then if they don't have solutions, that's a great opportunity for you. And most important to this model that we're talking about today is keep it simple. Keep it really, really simple. We're not talking about the giant project, like the giant product you want. We're talking about tackling one problem at a time on the road to tackling the big problem. And I'll make that a little more clear in a second. But right now, I want you to start dropping in the chat. If you already know problems in your industry that your future customers, audience, clients face, drop them in the chat. I want to hear if you've already locked down a problem that you're trying to solve. And in this, throughout this event, we can work on making those problems really small and something you can tackle easily. So again, I want to hone in on this. For this model that we're talking about, we really want to keep the problem simple. So you don't want to do just how to fix a car, right? Like how to fix a car is just too much work. It's it, That could be your big product down the road, but you want to slim down to something much more palpable for your first course, your first mini course, like how to change a tire. Something that you can teach someone in three to five steps and in under a week. That's what we're focusing on. We want quick wins for our audience and we want quick wins for us. We want to be able to output a course, start making money and have the ability to make future products. So again, trimming down, trimming down. Okay, so I want to take a look at some of the comments. Uh, quick Q, Reddit. Um, oh, sorry, I may have spelled it wrong, but Reddit is, uh, it's like a forum. It's a great place to go search what people are looking for. There's a lot of valuable information on Reddit. It's a website, though. It's a community place where people hang out, chat about things, find solutions, voice their problems. Fantastic, fantastic place to look for problems to solve. Okay, so now we're getting to the tricky part. 
things are getting a little more intense. And I do want to just call up, uh, we've got a few people passing job interviews. That is a fantastic, fantastic, very simple topic to tackle. I will ask uh, Sin Sign. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say your name. But um, I would love to hear what problems are within that. Is that small enough or are there problems within that that you could solve by getting even more granular, like building a bio that impresses, you know, a new boss or building confidence? There are these small problems within the big problem. And that's really, really what we want to focus on. Okay, and then I got a, some other per Rob is saying, I coach high school robotics teams. We answer the same basic questions for new teams every season. I want to build a course that welcomes new teams. Fantastic. So once again, Rob, just in the interest of this model, let's focus on, and I want to hear some of those small problems. What are those questions? What are individual questions? And then I got some other, Beth is here. I need to connect with their inner spirit and creativity by using words and image. That's a, okay, so that sounds like a goal. That's fantastic. Love where we're getting. Beth, I would love to hear what the problem is your audience has. It's not your problem. It's the problem the audience has. So, yep, love that. Love that. Uh, yes, Sid, you're right on the right. Right, We're getting to a small, solvable problem that we can make sure we can accomplish and promise a transformation for. So the next step, once you have that small bite-sized problem that you know you can solve in three to five steps and in under a week for someone, it's time to find some students. Now, a couple methods for finding students. Look to your peers. So those people that have already been asking you these questions, whether they're coworkers, friends, family members, any of that, those are the first people to ask, hey, I actually came up with a solution for that problem you were having. Would you want to get some one-on-one -on -one coaching to like form that or do a little cohort based coaching in order to fix that problem? Likeliness is they'll say yes. The next step is to ask your community, present the problem and see who responds. Keep at it and test in different places. We're looking for five to 10 students that you can work with either one on one or in a cohort based scenario. So, a great way to do this is go on your stories, whether you have an email list or hang up posters, whatever it is, and say, do you struggle with insert the problem here? Reach out to me. I'm doing cohort based coaching to help you tackle this problem. You also need to be very clear, and I'm going to give you some tools to do this in just a second to make sure that it is easy for those first few students to say yes and encourage sharing every person you talk to, you reach out to, every post you make, trying to get those first five to 10 students, you need to include the option for them to share it, the option and the inquiry. So you're saying, if this sounds like you, great. And if not, share with someone who might be interested. So this is really important. It has the ability to double, threefold, fourfold your reach and your impact. So when it comes to these first few students, we're talking about a group that may be paid, maybe not, but when you're really thinking about the mindset of getting this first few students, I want you to use this kind of relative equation. This isn't real math, but it works to just visualize what your actual pitch is to these students. And you're essentially asking them to make an investment, whether it's their time, their email, their money, or all three, that investment can be measured in the outcome the transformation that you're promising divided by the time and money it will take them to get there. So the reality is people want big results quick and fast. This is why we're focusing on small, tackleable problems that we can really help people accomplish really quick. So if you're asking for a lot of time from people, if this is going to be a two-month-long cohort-based session where you're capturing 
and helping these people through this problem, you're going to have to ask for probably less money because that time commitment is a lot for people right up front. If you're asking for less time, you can ask for a little money. The smaller the outcome you're promising, the less of the other's time and money you can expect. So I want you to use this equation to gauge reasonable expectations. And when you reach out to people, you just need to make sure that the investment you're asking from them is worth it. So you have to be really real uh, with yourself about the transformation, the outcome that you're promising with your first course. Once you start building more, you can bundle, ask for more. But with this first one, you need to be real with yourself to set your expectations and to make sure that their expectations are set. And when it comes time to reach out, we're going to focus on just one transformation. I'm going to hit this home a million times, right? We're talking about changing a tire, not fixing the whole car. One fantastic, easy transformation. So when you're reaching out to people, I want you to use this formula and you can change it a little bit if you want. I call this your transformational mantra. It is a great guide both for you and your audience and to accumulate students and to build your framework. It is so valuable to understand and know and have your transformational mantra on hand. If you've been to past spotlight events, you've seen this before. It comes up in a bunch of different scenarios and it's super, super valuable in a bunch of different scenarios. So just to play along, I'm gonna play through this whole event with this mechanic theme here, but if I am building my first my first course on how you change a tire to make this work, my transformational mantra for this course when I'm reaching out to get those first students is, hey, I'm helping handy car owners who want to be able to fix their cars and save money become confident changing a tire in two days. That is my pitch. That's my transformational mantra. That's what I'm going to pitch. That's how it's going to work. And don't forget to add if that sounds like you, let's work together. And if this sounds like someone you know, forward this to them. I can't hit this home enough, including a plea or a, a wish for them to share with someone they know really expands your market. That's what right off the bat early on is going to get you from having three to five friends to five to 10 legitimate customers. That is a huge difference and making sure your friends and family are a great place to start, but making sure that you have at least a few people out of your immediate friend group who you know will give honest feedback and honest information and honestly be invested in the course is super valuable. So, so far, we've covered you're going to find the problem. Then you're going to take that problem. You're going to turn it into a transformational mantra, which keys into the student the exact thing you're promising, and then you're going to use that to get your first students. The next step is to solve their problem. Now, you can choose exactly the system you do, whether you do it one-on-one -on -one or in a small cohort. You need to build a short-term program to achieve the goal. So remember right off the bat that 99% of people don't know what you do. It's really important. A lot of beginning course creators immediately want to get into the depths of every topic. But in most cases, what people are looking for and what people don't know may appear basic to you. So when it comes to fixing the problem, you want to start with the basics. What are the prerequisites for embarking on their transformational journey? So if someone needs to learn to fix a tire, what are the basic information, focus on that and make that your first coaching product, your first course. That is what we're going to build. And then you build from there. Make each session you do with one student or a group of students a tangible step in the right direction. Keep it feasible. And throughout the process, foster in engagement. Don't just lecture people. Ask them questions. Inquire. Let your students educate each other. So ask students to now regurgitate and resynthesize that information to each other to make sure that they really understand. You're also going to learn a lot from hearing how people resynthesize the information you've taught them. 
And maybe you'll find that there's other ways to verse something, to say something, to teach something. And more than anything, make it fun. I have never heard anyone in any online course say, please, can this be less fun? You need to be fun, entertaining, engaging. All of these things are going to create an atmosphere where people feel comfortable giving you honest feedback, honest testimonials, honest engagement. It's so valuable to make sure that you're having a good time throughout this process. So once you have set up those times, whether it's once a week, whether it's two days in a row, whether it's half hour sessions, whether it's hour long sessions, whether it's one on one or in a cohort, once you've set that up, you need to go and draft your curriculum. This will work both for your course and for coaching. And you want to use a system of sections and lessons. So just to give an example of what that looks like, let's say I'm hosting two, uh, I, like I said, I'm hosting a session. I'm teaching you how to change a tire on a car. It's going to be two half hour sessions and section one or session one is the tools you're going to need. We're just going to meet for a half hour, make sure everyone knows what tools they need and some basic safety about those tools. Then you're going to go out and get it. You're going to come back for section two where we're actually going to dive into how to do this. And then within that, you can break it up into lessons. So lesson one might be what tools you need. So I'm going to talk about a car jack, a lug wrench, a spare tire, and the difference between discount tool places like Harbor Freight and AutoZone. Where's a good place to buy them? That's the first lesson. So maybe the first 10 minutes of our half hour session is going to be just about what tools you need. Then the second 10 minutes of that half hour session are going to be basic safety measures. So wear gloves, don't rely on a jack, don't get under your car without additional support, and always have your phone nearby in case anything happens and you do need emergency help or care. And that wraps up the first session with these students. I want to leave an extra five or 10 minutes at the end of the session to get to any questions, answer any questions. And then we'll meet again next week, tomorrow, whenever you schedule it. And we're going to talk about removing old tires. So lesson one, we're going to jack up your car. Lesson two, we're going to remove the old tires again, and maybe in the same session, maybe not. But you want to start thinking about your curriculum in a series of sections and then individual lessons within there. This is going to make it so much easier down the road when it is time to put all of that into Teachable. And as far as how you host these sessions, you can do them on Zoom, you can do them on Google Meets, you can do them on Zencaster. Zencaster is a podcasting tool, but it is fantastic for this as well. Or you can do them in person, but I just wanted to give you these as they are a fantastic tool. And it is ideal doing these online because it is super easy to capture and record what you're doing. So. Hopefully everyone's on the same page. Let me know in the comments. I know I'm moving fast, but I want to give you as much as I can without taking up too much of your time. So let me know if this is making sense so far. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments. But essentially so far, we found a problem. We found the first group of students and we've started with live coaching sessions, working with either one-on-one -on -one or the whole group of students teaching them through a curriculum live to help them through this transformation. And then the most important part of this process, while you are solving the problem, is to collect and adapt. So throughout your coaching, you want to cultivate trust, create an atmosphere where students feel comfortable sharing. And that's part of being fun. Ask questions, you know, in, inquire to them, be vulnerable, be real, be a, a real human being so that other people feel they can do the same. Build in feedback. So throughout your coaching sessions, make sure to leave time for questions. Maybe send up with follow-up surveys after each one. Maybe and 
ask them for more information or how they learned it. It's so valuable to hear from students how they're intaking the information. And make sure to adapt. You may have built a curriculum, but if people are asking for something, give it to them. Develop it, give it to them, and help them out. And document everything. Record all your sessions. Ask for any feedback in writing. Keep diligent notes because at the end of the day, when it all trims down, this is your mini course. If you've filmed all of these Zoom sessions, you have notes and you have testimonials from students and you have frequently asked questions and all of that, you are ready to build a mini course. You're done. Now, you may need to take the video from that and edit it. There's a few fantastic options for doing so. You can use Canva, which is totally free and super easy to use. We have done past Spotlight events on how to edit video in Canva. There's software like DaVinci Resolve, which is free to start out with, and it's very, very high quality. Or you can use Premiere, Adobe Premiere, which does have a steeper learning curve, but I do put it here because it is available as an app. So if you aren't really familiar with video editing, the Adobe Premiere app is super, super easy to use. And you can take all of those Zoom recordings, pop it in any of these software, and cut it down to the points where you're teaching, you're instructing, and that is your lesson. You have done two things at once. You've coached and built your mini course at the same time. You can also, at this point, just hire someone to edit the video. You can go to Upwork. You can go to Fiverr. You can look on Instagram for video editors. You should expect to pay between $15 and $50 per video, depending on if you want any additional graphics or how long these lessons or videos are. But it is so worth it. If you've just finished a few days or a few weeks or a few months of cohort-based co coaching like this, you're likely pretty tired. So it's worth it to set that stuff off and throw a little money at it to get it edited down into nice, clean, comprehensive, quick lessons that are ready to go on Teachable. So when it comes to actually adding your course to Teachable, and I hope you're starting to get the vibe of why I'm structuring things like this for you, I want to show you how easy that is and why I told you to build your curriculum in a section and lesson based format. Because if you look at the curriculum builder here in Teachable, that's exactly how it's built. So you've already done the front work. You know your sections, you know your lessons, and all you have to do is upload that video. It's as easy as adding a new lecture naming that lecture, whatever you want. And then if you edit the lecture, you can simply upload your video, add a file, any text. You could create quizzes. If you're working in the coding field, you can do that. And you can add codes. And you can upsell any of your existing products throughout the course. We'll get into that a little more in a second. But I just hope you understand and let me know in the comments if this makes sense. This is why we've structured everything this way. So at this point, it becomes super easy to build your course in Teachable. You just input that information in there exactly how you taught it once it's edited down. And now you have a mini course. And I just want to answer. There's a question coming in here. Uh, Luis is asking, is it okay to use PLR for your topic if you aren't comfortable with writing on your own? Of course, to just use it for a bit. Um, I'm so sorry, Luis. I don't know what PLR is. Please let me know, and I'm happy to answer your question. Excuse my ignorance if I don't know that terminology, um, but just let me know what that is, or anyone let me know what that is. Um, and I will show you. And also, Carol is asking for video editing software names again. I'll show that real quick. Um, and feel free to grab a screenshot of this if you want. Uh, Luis, I'm also, sorry, uh, Carol, grab a screenshot of this. While you're doing that, I'm going to private label rights. Um, 
Luis, I still don't know what this is, and I'm so sorry. I feel absolutely ignorant here. Um, if you can explain that to me, I I would be overjoyed to learn. Um, and then Linda was saying, were those the only two apps to edit Zoom? What are they again? So once again, these are there's three. These are just three potential options for editing video. There are endless options. And once again, I highly do encourage as well hiring someone, even if it's just the first one, so you have a sense of what it should look like. Um, oh, I see, Richard. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Linda, Richard, uh, as far as using other people's content, you can do whatever you need to build your curriculum so long as you make it your own at some point. I am not a lawyer. I'm not going to at any point say what is or isn't legally yours. But if you want to use someone else's framework that you know works to at least teach the coaching and then turn that into your own curriculum, Go ahead, do whatever it takes to get it done within the legal parameters. So don't just go ripping people off. But if you can teach someone else's curriculum in your own way, add your own flair, add your own quality and add your own authentic self to it. Absolutely. Go for it. So why I love focusing on this system and working in this way where you take a problem, you find a group of students who have that problem, you coach them through it live, and then you edit and turn that into a mini course is because at the end of the day, you'll have a clear problem. You'll have a clear solution, right? You've sourced the problem, your solution, you've proven that it works with a group of students, which gives you proof of value, you also should be getting testimonials from these students so that when you launch your course, you don't need to wait for students to go through the course to already have validity for future students. You've already done that. And I was pretty light on this, but at any part in this process, you can charge. If you're doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, you should absolutely charge a little bit. If you're doing cohort-based coaching, you should absolutely charge a little bit. This is valuable, what you're giving. And then once you build and put out the course, you should charge money for it. So you now have money in the bank from this small tangible solution that you can use for future courses that you're going to build. And you've developed a repeatable system that you can use to continue tackling each individual problem as you go. So if we think of this in a kind of wheel model, you can think of each of these problems that you find, whether it's how to change a tire, how to change your oil, talking to mechanics, understanding electrical, flushing a radiator, each one of these things I could teach in one to two hours with a group of students, turn that into a mini course. And then once I have a coherent, bun a coherent group of courses, I can sell them individually or I can bundle that into that big product that has been my goal the whole time. Call it the home mechanics toolkit and charge money for each individual one or as a whole throughout the process. That also harkens back to Teachable's ability to upsell. So once you have a second course, you can upsell that one. Once you have a third course, you can upsell the bundle. Once you have five, six courses, you can separate those into separate little bundles and upsell them together. Having a variety of small courses is so much more valuable. Okay, Polly Polly. It's so much more valuable than having any giant course that you're now struggling to put out, struggling to sell, struggling to find value in. If you can solve an individual problem really quickly for a small group of people, you have proven value and you can now take that and put it out there in the world in a tangible product without waiting and waiting and waiting. So last 
I just want to summarize here and we're wrapping up. So feel free to throw any questions you have in the comments. I know I threw a lot at you really quick here, but once again, I don't want to take up a lot of your time and I hope you got a lot of value. But at the beginning, I said you could do all of these things. And I hope you see now how you can crowdsource your topic by reflecting, by researching, find, or you already know, like a lot of people here, find the small problems within that bigger problem that you're trying to cover and use each little problem as a solution. You can build as you go. So in the process of teaching this to a small group of people, you can get paid, you can source future courses. So maybe while you're in a coaching session, you find questions and problems that your, your customers, your clients, your students face, turn those into future mini courses. You will adapt as you grow. At any point, you can come back and refine your mini course. You can always go back and re-record any video, add additional resources. You can do another coaching session with students who have been through the course, see if it's still valuable, and you can get paid along the way because your one-on-one -on -one time is extremely valuable. So if you can get paid, and you can, if you could get paid to do these coaching sessions, you are developing the seed money to get video editing, to get some marketing help, all of those things. And then once you put out one course, now that's out there for sale. That can help fund your future courses on and on as you go. The last thing you need to do is just do it. So if you need to watch the replay again, if you need to go back and screenshot any of this framework, go ahead and do it. But whether it's today or tomorrow or the day after, I want you to start by sourcing those problems. So write down three to five small, tangible, really simple problems that you can solve in three to five steps Choose one, the logical first one, and go find those first few students, do a few coaching sessions with them, edit that into a mini course, and I guarantee within a week, you can build a tangible solution to a problem in the form of a mini course in a system that you can repeat time and time and time and time again. It is is such a better system than setting out to just build one giant product right off the bat, and you will still end up with that giant product down the road. So let me know in the comments if this all makes sense, if you have any questions about any aspects. Like I said, I know I went quickly through, but I really hope it's resonating that this is really a pretty simple system of sourcing a problem, grabbing people who have that problem, coaching them through it and capturing that coaching on film, editing that down into videos that can then be made into your mini course. You repeat this cyclically and you will be able to build a variety of products or that giant product you want in no time. So I do have a lot of questions coming in and I just want to make sure to get all of them. So, um, Chinedu, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, is saying, should all courses have videos or will a PDF alone suffice? Now, Chinedu, I get this question all the time and it depends a little bit, but usually, and you can call me out if this is not where it's coming from, usually this question comes from not feeling confident on the camera. But what I love about this system is you're not doing it in a vacuum. You're not alone in a room with a camera. You are going to be actually working live with Zoom students in an environment that feels comfortable. So you're going to be presenting in that way. And you shouldn't be as worried. If you need any tips on feeling competent in front of the camera, go check out. It, last week, we did an event called How to Build Confidence on Camera, and I really went into detail about how to get comfortable in front of the camera. You don't have to have video in your courses, but I guarantee you it'll build more trust. It'll make you a better presenter and a better speaker. And down the road, it will be worth your time to get comfortable on the camera. All right. We got some great questions coming in here. Saleta is saying, okay, what if someone already covered the same subject matter? Doesn't matter. That doesn't matter one bit. 
one of my favorite parts about the current state of online education is people don't really care necessarily about the subject matter as much as they care about learning it from you. If you have a slightly different perspective, if you have a slightly different take, a different journey in the way you learn the information, or even just who you are, if it's your sense of humor, your demographic, your nationality, any of those things that I relate with more and I would prefer to learn from you, then you have something special. So, Saleta, I know I may sound a little harsh about this, but forget that question even exists. It doesn't matter. Go out there, teach the subject the way you would do it, teach it as authentically as you can with your expertise, and I guarantee you will find people who want to learn from you and no one else. Oh, we got so many good questions coming in. Okay, so Linda is saying, if you have people sharing on Zoom, do you need to delete that in the course later or make them remain anonymous? Uh, if you are to sell it later, maybe people don't want... Yes, so... In general, Linda, the idea of this is that you are going to edit the video down to the parts where you're presenting. Unless you have specific consent to include the students on there, that's why I included the video editing software and all of that, because you are going to want to ultimately edit it into just the parts where it's you educating the students. Great question, though. Um, okay. How would you recommend doing the course in a valuable way that people would want to pay, given there are a lot of free information on YouTube? Totally. So this is a fascinating and wonderful part about courses and specifically mini courses. So you can sell mini courses and you have to price them reasonably. Teachable has fantastic resources for pricing your course. We've done some work at that at Spotlight. So go please check out some past events for that. Um, but in the end, the course format is what people pay for. You're basically saying you don't have to go and search on YouTube. You don't have to get lost into the weeds. I did all of that, and I'm giving it to you in a logical format. There are even creators who bundle courses out of all the free YouTube videos they put out with. You could go find all of the information they're teaching in their course for free, on their YouTube, on their social media, but it is the format, the logical step-by-step -step format that people are paying for. So remember that. It is not necessarily the value itself. It is the format and the value that people are interested in. Okay. Um, oh, Sarah is always here and so awesome. Uh, my first course is going to be a sock knitting course. Currently got back on sock pay, but I have tentative plans to do a lace knitting course. I'm struggling with how to pair them. Sarah, you're always here and you're always so fantastic with taking this information, synthesizing it. I just want to ask you, is sock knitting or is lace knitting actually small enough? Is it a small enough pattern or can you get smaller? Okay, Laurel is asking a question. Does Teachable have coaching to help us sort course materials into mini courses? Teachable does have a launch accelerator program that is fantastic. And the link is in the description. And that is exactly what we want to promote for you today. So the launch accelerator program is going to help you through that whole process. If you sign up for any of Teachable's paid plans today, you are going to get access to the Launch Accelerator program, which ex includes additional coaching and additional products and additional resources to help you through that. So yes, you caught me before my pitch here, but that is exactly what we're doing. Uh, I just want to make sure I'm caught up with every question here. Um. A Zoom meeting or Zoom webinar should be used. Yes, Zoom is a fantastic place to do this. I also did say Google Meets and some other options are great there. Um, yes, and this is fantastic. Linda, you're in the right thing. Uh, mini workshops that can be a course later. Good idea. That is exactly what we're talking about today. 100%. We're doing little workshops that we then edit into mini courses. So, I do want to take a moment today to talk about what I was just talking about and share my screen here. Oh, shoot. Ah, everyone, give me a second here. 
I it's not letting me share what I want to, but I do want to talk about an opportunity you have here today to join Teachable. If you haven't joined Teachable yet, you can do so completely free. Below is the link to join Teachable for free, and it is so valuable just to get in there and start building courses, building products, building all of these elements that are really, really going to make it so much easier so that by the time you're ready to actually put your course in there, you're not floundering around, you know how the platform works, and you're ready to go. That is going to make such a difference, and you can do it completely for free. And it is not a like trial period or anything like that. It is a um, it is just a free account, and you can do all of these things we've been talking about right there in Teachable, and it's fantastic. And if you sign up today for the Launch Accelerator Challenge or for any basic plan, even the basic plan or further, you are going to get access to the Launch Accelerator Challenge. And that is going to give you in 30 days an outline, your first lecture, and you'll learn how to sell all with expert step-by-step -step guidance. So especially if you're interested in doing this mini course format, this is going to get you there so fast. And the Launch Accelerator also includes community. You're going to have best practices with a network of other creators and access to exclusive content curated by Teachable. You're going to have step-by-step -step guidance throughout the process and award-winning support. So you will have email support throughout the entire process if you need any help. And it's guaranteed. So if in 30 days you feel like you didn't get what you want out of Teachable or the Launch Accelerator, you can get your money back. Just click the link below. And today, if you do so, you will get $10 off any paid plan for a full year. So you could save a lot of money right off the bat and get access to the Launch Accelerator Challenge. I'm going to throw the link in the chat as well so everyone has it. But if you are new to Teachable or if you're just getting started and you are ready to start building your online course, this is going to be such a valuable time to do it. It's going to really set you up for success and you're going to be in a position to succeed right off the bat. So the link is in the chat right there. I'll make sure it's in the description as well. But really, 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 if you're here to build online courses, it's a great time to start. Sign up. That's going to push you. Use this format we talked about today, and you will be on a path to success where you can build that giant course that you want to have someday, but you're going to do it step by step, make money along the way, prove transformations along the way, and guarantee that you're not working in a vacuum. So once again, everyone, thank you so much for being here today. It's always a blast hanging out with you. Hop in the chat. Let me know if I didn't answer any of your questions, if there's still challenges you're facing. Let me know if it was helpful. And please check out the Spotlight by Teachable YouTube for more events. Next week, we're going to have three events all around further challenges and topics. And we've covered a lot in the past. So please, 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 if you're invested in growing your online business, take the opportunity, take the time to dive into these resources, sign up for that free Teachable account or a basic plan with that Launch Accelerator Challenge. And I guarantee you, if you use this format, you can have a course up and running in 30 days and have a reusable format for outputting more and more courses. With all of that said, I think... I've, I think I've gotten to all the questions. Thank you, everyone, so much for being here today. It's always a blast hanging with you, and I hope to see you in future events. If you had a good time today, please like and subscribe to the Spotlight YouTube channel. Make sure those notifications are on so you get notified about future events. And also check out in the description, you can sign up for our newsletter so you get updates directly to your inbox about new discounts and offers, new resources that we are providing you with to make sure that you have a smooth path to developing your online course business. 
It's always a delight hanging with y'all. Have a wonderful day and we'll see y'all soon.